Hello everybody. Um, just lately I've been doing quite a lot about Doggerland and then coming across this video and doing a, a sort of a hangout with Julian about this video of Atlantis being back you know, ne next to England. It was next to England and not being able to find that video anywhere else and we've got Doggerland and um, anyway, read what's on the screen if you want. I made this video, um, it was aired last week, it's showing National Geographic, it's this one here, okay, on Sun and Moon, it's only so many videos back, there's the title, and you know, I knew Doggerbank and what they were saying down there was something, but I hadn't realised it was a star fort and there was so much down there. And then when me, and, when me and Gillian were watching this, and obviously we did this um, hangout together, <clears throat> we were suddenly looking at something so different. I can't find it on National Geographic. This is Doggerbank. Look at it. Out between us. Holland, Belgium, no, Holland, Germany. Atlantis, hit by a tsunami. They're putting this as thousands of years ago, and that was it. The whole thing was covered up. It's got bridges. These people were civilized. But look to the land. I don't know whether it's been dug a bit lower than the sea there, but anyway. You can clearly see it through the water. This is what it looks like on graphs. Anyway, this is what this programme is saying. But anyway, I'm just adding this in. So, <clears throat> all mapped out. They know what it is. The video where I saw it is saying that this is Atlantis. So when the lady says what she says, which is coming up, I wonder if she knows that all this is supposed to be there. I can't substantiate it, but I'm just showing it. Anyway, I showed this video the other day. We found this down there. Look at the perfect condition it's in. That was down there. It's got the tree of life in the middle of it. There are buildings down there. And that is how deep the water is. It's not very deep there. These are what it's saying it looked like there. I mean, that lady in the video, she's talking about villages and towns went. They're saying it looks like this out there. I'm sure she'll be very interested in hearing this or seeing it. I'm not saying it's real. I'm saying that this is what I've seen. I'm going to send it to her to see what she thinks. Look at that. Hmm. Anyway, thanks for watching and we're going to carry on now. It's showing... I wanted to find out the depths of the waters. So on this map here, um, you can see the very light blue is 0 to 30. And there you go. You can see the Doggerland bit on the right hand side here. And they, they do it here and it's a little bit darker there. And I actually know that off Brighton there is a cliff. 
you can find that information people will say out past the pier the, the land drops away but look that's naught to 10 meters or whatever that is feet um, you can see it there so I was looking up this information and I came across this woman they are such liars now this woman I really hope she doesn't mind me playing this part of the footage of her footage it's on a web page but she explains really what happened and the um, the, the timing is totally 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 wrong it's all wrong all of it this incident with this tsunami only happened in the 1500s they told us that it happened you know thousands of years before Jesus anyway I was looking up places around the UK where was there trees in that in the water or they're now petrified because they get seawater or whatever and I came across quite a few places you know one was in Wales one was in Cornwall I think one was up north and they all were explaining that they have you know like some big storms have come in and then what's happened is when those storms have gone it's shown the tree stumps which nobody knew were there before so these articles on the screen now are them even talking about Doggerland there look you can see known as Doggerland connected to the UK so all to do with the Ice Age the last Ice Age and all that it's a load of rubbish James even said you know because there are quite a big lumps of tree found how could they have not rotted away or you know it can't be thousands of years old anyway we will get to it but I've, I've done these little recordings to show you other places and what this lady's going to say comes up on this video a little bit later on um, yeah so we're talking about forests on where the beaches are or, or, or being shown after storms you've got doggerland and you know and then we find oh well you know it's um now uh, Atlantis, you know, but, but, you know, I didn't even see it on National Geographic, which is where the video, you know, where the video was supposed to have come from. It had their logo on it. Uh, I found it on this channel and um, I used a little bit of footage. Anyway, there you go. Look, look at that. Uh, pool is down. It's further along than the Isle of Wight going towards Cornwall, but they found this huge piece of fossilized petrified ancient tree stump and then all these places now are showing that on the beaches or in the water there are or there were trees that nobody knows about and now oh look an ancient forest has been found I mean, over our lives, we might have even seen the odd thing like this and not even really thought about it and just thought, oh, well, look, there's a tree stump here, but not really put it all together or something. But um, I was so pleased because obviously this is me getting all the information together and then I come across this lady and I'm so pleased that she made her video because she explains it all and they have you know whatever happened happened in the say the 1500s and to me something happened with the war of the roses that was just such a weird time that's about the same time and um to me it all goes back to the war of the roses uh just you know Amy and I've talked about it quite a lot of times anyway there's somewhere else um, we've talked about it quite a few times the fact that 
something's not right with that time you can't even work it out and like the other day I said I found out that King Charles the first of England was also King Charles the fifth of another country and of that country he was the Holy Roman Emperor which means he was the Holy Roman Emperor of the UK oh no but he's a UK uh, or a British King English King but he was the, he was the Holy Roman Emperor so they don't explain that do they but anyway see again more cliff line just like some of the videos that I've been putting out um, tree stumps out there see below the, the sort of crust which is around us or the cliffs that are around us so um, you know other people that one was a BBC document or article You know, this this big part of Doggerland was real, and then there's another part where, until very recently, you know, look up information. What's in the sea is different to what's on the land. We're on a hard rock, and um, they call the sea something else. With Doggerland and all that in the older documents, they don't call it Doggerland and land and land that's in the sea. But now in our history comes Doggerland and so forth and so there's always two sides to everything anyway this one I just wanted a it's, this is showing something else right the best place for trees but this is the kind of thing this is what England looks like what it is is the base is there but you know it comes out probably to where my I told you that there's the cliffs of Dover and there aren't many hills. There are hills, but they're not very big. And then when you get to just 10 miles past me, it goes down like this. So we're living on this plateau, and then this plateau down here is lower. A bit like this drawing. I hope you understand that. I've been dying. I'd love to see a, a cut through of England like this, but that's about where, you know, you've got to go down the hills. So it's the same thing. Anyway, this was, a um, again, about ancient trees but that that picture for me just explained it all if you understand that we're living on these plateaus on a plateau it's a plateau then other plateaus up and down and uh, yeah it's a bit like that you know it's not explained to us that that's the kind of place we're living in there's plateaus up here lower land down there and um, yeah although this is you can read it says there the best populated trees is dunk but um, it, it kind of explains anyway um, yes well dearie me always got to be something else hasn't it climate crisis and stuff oh so they said that they would include replanting the trees that they chop down but they they want to chop down the trees they, they always seem to want to chop the trees down and yet there are you know those trees in america there are certain places where there are big great big trees but they're not many anymore I was just trying to find a map with well, how far out do the trees go into the water and you know but I didn't it wasn't mm, it wasn't quite what I wanted so I wasn't really doing very well But I keep looking and I will be playing what the lady says in about five minutes time or just over five minutes time. Uh, I'm so pleased that she made this video, really I am because it just, she doesn't, she's just not doing it for Tartaria or any other thing. She's just doing her little blog on her web page and so forth but she explains it and so 
I'm so happy, but you know, look at the years they're using, 6,000 years. This one's up north, dog, dog, dog a land side. There you go, look, there's even tree stumps on the beach. I still wasn't far I wanted what I was really looking for I wanted a map of where they'd found the trees in the water and I, I wasn't finding it but I was finding the places where 6,000 years ago whatever many thousands of years ago they say oh these were um, ancient trees and forests and stuff like that and you know So I was finding, because I, I specifically put it in, in fact I started to go through the counties, you know, Dorset, Ancient Trees and so forth, and um, so I was doing it individually rather than having one map with them all on, because they don't say how far they quite go out into the sea, only that they've come across tree stumps or, I mean that could be civilization and it's just, you know, some of the bits of wood could be civilization and just been left there but you know there's a lot of places with these stumps and so forth so got to be something else so that one's yorkshire it's in wales and then this person they had um an ancient tree buried in Norfolk to be trans to be made into a great big table. Weird table it looks, but anyway, that's the log, whether that's real or not. But uh, I just saw that on my round, so I thought I'd stick that in. Oh, my daughter's having a bath now, so I'll shut the door. Don't want to hear the bath going in the background, do we? But anyway. And then um, I think I'll show a picture of that's made into a table. Oh, everything you look at is just covered. There you go, that's the table, or that's what it will look like. You think, well, great big table. But um, oh, it's got so many ads. Anyway, there it is. Just try, even just trying to stop on the table was quite difficult. But anyway, yeah, more ancient forests out in the sea around England. But if I hadn't done all this, I wouldn't have found this lady. And I just love what she says. Oh, it's 7,000 years now. And actually, you've got, sometimes you have to put in the word woodland. It isn't in this forest. You've got to put in different words. But that one's 7,000 years. But tree stumps out in the beach. Maybe more people will notice it now. Yes. Hey, look at that. Trees there. At least we've got pictures of them. This one's linking it to Dogger Bank. Most places must have this as well. We can't be the only place, but you know, they talked about this flooding, and um, 
everything has been stretched out when actually I think the timing and everything's much more condensed. Um, but all these trees have petrified. It must be the, the sea water that does it. Uh, I'm surprised that it doesn't happen to the fish, does it? But it happens to, obviously, trees don't like sea water either. But have you noticed? Where's the rest of the tree? It must have been a big gale that knocked all these trees down and, and took them almost to the bottom where their roots are. If you understand what I mean. That must be... Because, you know, they're not... It's not... Like, I don't know. Where's the rest of the tree? That I find so bizarre. And I think we'll move on a little bit because this is... um. Yeah, I haven't edited it. Right, here we go. It took me ages to get that video going. You can see that tree was cut. A lot of these trees though, where's the rest of the tree? What, that they got broken off that low down? I mean, wow, that one's been cut. Just picture after picture. I mean, you can count, maybe count the rings in there almost to see how old that tree is. I've got to be about 50 years old. Where is the rest of the tree? You could even understand that, um, just don't forget, most of these have been buried and then with storms and things, they've been uncovered on the beaches. Anyway, we're nearly at the point now. Oh, well, there you go. We're nearly at the point now where that lady's going to play. I'm so happy about this lady. Really, I am. It makes my video. I hope that this leads up to listening to what she says because they've lied to us when the tsunami happened on Doggerland. It didn't happen thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Whatever happened, right, it happened in the 1500s. and this lady is going to explain it anyway you can any of these bits of information that i've put up you can stop and read them because it's still quite fascinating to think i mean most people don't even realize there's trees in this in the water and look at that one it's called it's a monument not very big trees then are they if you know what i mean when you look at that Anyway, I've seen that a few times. Sea Henge. Anyway, the video is going to start playing now. I thought we'd have a word about the sunken village. Now, some of you might already know about the sunken village, and if you've been to the Russell Beach group meetings, you'll have possibly been to a presentation from Wire Archaeology Society and they did a they did a talk about the sunken village and whether or not whether or not there is one or there's not one because opinion is divided. So I told you last week about the um, petrified forest actually I think I'll be able to get round the end we'll risk it for a swiss skip I told you last week about the petrified forest and the tree remains that you can see well you need to be a bit more 
a bit more uh, intrepid, shall we say, to find the sunken village. It's supposed to be somewhere round about here. So according to wire archaeology, the remains of the sunken village are supposed to be somewhere round about here. When I say here, I mean there. So apparently, in the 1500s, there was, it, it, seems, it seems fairly certain that there was some kind of big event. What that event actually was is still open to um, exact identification. But there was some kind of big flood. So it might have been a tsunami, it might have been a bug burst. Whatever it is, it actually washed away quite a few different villages along this coast. Um, so according to our archaeology, there is a sunken village. They went out at low neap tide. Neap tide being a low spring tide as early as low gets. Somewhere, well that's the venue, so I'm nearly up to the venue. So from there, in a straight line, somewhere sort of there. Um, and they went out and did a bit of a dig and they found A-frames off, obviously off the roof of a house and various other pieces of masonry and woodwork that could only have been from habitation. They clearly weren't logs and, and trunks and things that had been washed into the sea and, and stuck, stuck in the mud. And the legend has it that this village was called Singleton Thorpe, as in people that lived on the shingle, Shingleton, and they all moved to Singleton. No, sorry, I've got that wrong. The, the, the legend is that this was Singleton, out here, and then when this event happened, this, this tsunami, they moved from here, inland and that's how Singleton Thorpe gets its name that's the right way around but opinion on that is divided because historical records um, indicate that Singleton Thorpe was there long before this flood event took place so we we, being me, Visit Cleveland, had a, a, a university student from Lancaster do some investigations on it last year, which were really interesting. And it's actually all online for you to read if you want to look at it. Um, so Imogen looked back through all the records that she could find and all the data that she could find to try and identify whether this event had actually happened. And it turns out that, yes, it seems indisputable that the event happened, but whether or not it went in the exact precise location of Singleton to Singleton Top is still a bit kind of vague. It's on the Visit Cleveland's website if you want to read it. It's really interesting. It's written in a really easy to understand way. So it's not not sort of eyebrow piece of research it's it's good as well worth a read in fact i'll put the link in the comments underneath this video and then you can find it so what a lovely day and just like i said when you get walking it is quite warm